let's see what we are going to talk about <laughs> this evening. Uh, as usual, uh, I treat uh, this uh, meeting and any Baba meeting as a spiritual circle where people are centered with Baba, <clears throat> coming together with peace and love. That's the meaning of a spiritual circle. And uh, actually each meeting I keep on repeating it uh, for the sex, since nobody else I think is saying it. And uh, <clears throat> if you want to heal humanity, we have to recreate the spiritual circles. The spiritual, spiritual circle is actually like a, a magnifying lens. Since we are working together with some harmony, we can uh, increase uh, the influx of divine energy to the planet. Of course, two, three people, humble people, <clears throat> it's a humble beginning, but it's better than nothing. If there'll be more groups like this, working well, organized, or coordinated with love, the fate of humanity would have been changed. So this is where we are at the moment. You have to accept the situation that uh, <clears throat> simply most of us are not doing it. So we try to do it here. <clears throat> now, what do we want to discuss about? Uh, Jeff was here last, last time and we had some discussion about health issues, physical and mental. <clears throat> I've been dealing with the physical and the mental and emotional problems quite from the beginning. <clears throat> and due to the help of Baba, I managed to overcome endless situations, even uh, quite a few physical problems that the science didn't know how to deal with. And definitely mental and emotional problems that only Baba can uh, deal with. <clears throat> as soon as I said in a few times in the past, as soon as he walked into my life, he changed my state of consciousness in 180 degrees at once. So from an ordinary human being without any consciousness whatsoever, I became uh, aware of Baba's uh, high status as the avatar of the age. Since then, uh, this uh, acquaintance gave me the opportunities uh, to heal myself and to heal uh, humankind. Because when each one of us is making progress, healing, uh, I mean, I'm healing myself, I'm healing humanity. Opens the way for everybody to be. That's the whole point. It's not nothing selfish. It's very crucial, important to come to balance, uh, to come to our true position as the healthy individuals, both mentally and emotionally and physically, to serve humanity. Healing sick people simply cannot do it. If I'm getting into a emotional upheavals, cannot have the situation. Since we are now in a <clears throat> very painful situation. By the way, do you hear me well? Okay. Fine, because you told me in the morning, you made me spoke that you don't hear me. So it's, the, the sound is okay? Well, I, it, uh, it sounds all right. I have mine turned up, uh, and people yeah, can. It's a bit low. It, it's a bit low. You saying, Lutve? A bit yeah. low. Shall I speak a little bit louder? Yeah, or a you. A little can... bit. Or I you can go to the volume control where your microphone is and adjust the volume up. Um, I can uh, adjust where, only the... Where the microphone is, there's a little up arrow. And you can go to audio settings. This is the same button of the... Yeah, it's the same as the microphone, but the, it's don't hit the microphone, that's mute. But the up arrow will take you to audio settings, the little tiny up arrow, up. And then audio settings. No, it doesn't say anything about this here. 
It's only telling me that I'm connected to the internet. I don't know what it does. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> well, I, I, don't, I don't know how to adjust yours, <laughs> uh, but whatever. Uh, then just speak a little bit louder or get a little bit closer. <clears throat> yeah, I was thinking that maybe there is something which you have to adjust in the computer, but I don't know how to do this. Never mind, but this is the recordings are uh, pretty clear. I, I keep on listening to each of the recording uh, to learn and to fill in gaps even in case I forget something. So here is a story. <clears throat> Spoke with uh, Lutfi this week, exchanged a few emails concerning the current situation since I have been dealing, communicating with uh, Lutfi for a long time by now. She's originally from Egypt. I'm originally from Israel. So it's a nice uh, communication between the both of us. We are humans. We are two people and uh, we like to share. Uh, but it's in a, maybe it's in a way some kind of significance that uh, these two people who used to have uh, who still have lots of troubles communicating. <clears throat> And personally, I have been dealing with uh, the Arabic sector on a daily basis. <clears throat> I guess you read my article about uh, the conflict between Jews and Islam. And one of the first sentences I uh, was writing that my relations with the Arabs are actually a model. And from this stance, from this basis, that uh, first I had to establish uh, cordial relations with, uh, with the people, not because of Arabs, but because they're human beings. And that, that's uh, the way I was trained by Baba to see that each person is actually has a divine spark in him and have to learn to respect him, whether he accepts me or not, whether he likes me or not, it doesn't matter. So I learned to accept everybody. And of course, initially, before Baba came to my life, uh, it's naturally that we as human beings uh, hate uh, our uh, enemies. <laughs> I've been to endless wars since I was re recalled to the military. And since I was born, we all, all the time under threats of our uh, Arabic neighbors to exterminate this uh, little country. For whatever reason, they cannot accept it. Okay, so how to reconcile and resolve it? I've said in the past that this problem continues for many thousands of years, that we humanity lost the way, and it is not a problem of borders and pieces of land. This uh, conflict over pieces of land makes us actually turned us into animals. Animals care about the pieces of land. It's my uh, Habitat, this is where I survive as an animal. And uh, actually, what happened to us? We became uh, animals. Baba is calling us talking animals. That this is his expression, not mine. That's what he said. This is due to the fact that we kicked uh, the Lord out of the garden and tried to improve it. And uh, this is actually the story of the Garden of Eden. <clears throat> It's not that the God kicked us out of the garden because we sinned and we told Mr. God, thank you very much, we'll do a better job. You know what you are doing. That's, that's, I will have been writing an article about uh, Genesis and uh, Exodus, the two books of uh, Moses. I started to write it in Mirabad, I told you this in the past. So Baba gave me the key uh, I've seen, experienced as a vision, not a biblical vision, of course, but inside my mental <clears throat> apparatus, I've seen the first uh, sentence of uh, Genesis, which is wrongly being translated uh, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. I've seen uh, it as like a picture, like a drama the explosion of uh, infinitude into manyness. And I explained, uh, I wrote just on the first line, uh, 
six or seven pages of, I tried to explain my experience. This happened in May Rabat. It was in May Rabat, 2005 or six, something like this. And uh, uh, while I had this uh, so-called vision or experience, I kept a tape recorder with me and I explained my experience to the tape recorder. And when I came home uh, later on, I started to put it down into words, try to explain it. And I kept on working on the first two books. And uh, every Thursday evening, Israeli time, I have a meeting with two friends, reading it in Hebrew. And it, it contains uh, actually extraordinary revelations of uh, the Bible, which never been revealed before. Quite humbly saying, it's not because I'm uh, initiate or something, but uh, <clears throat> as I said, Baba simply uh, gave me the keys and gave me the insights and the inspiration. It's his work. He's the author. I am the writer. It happened before that he gave me the insights and he gave me the influence how to write because I didn't know. He, he is my teacher. He's my tutor. Whatsoever I know, whatsoever I'm telling you, is his teachings. So, so a vivid, active experience. Like I told you before, uh, to understand the purpose of war by going to war, not by, by reading books on war. You go to war, and then you see what happens. And you're uh, going to many wars. You see that there is some fundamental change inside the psychic makeup of the people, our experiences of myself. We, when you go there, they undergo a very severe shock which shakes up the whole layers of the sub subconscious mind, shaking up all the ancient sanskara, waking up releasing all this stuff and giving it and the opportunity to be released and free our consciousness so become a, we live a, at last one day clear vision this is what's supposed to happen due to spiritual training while we're entering the path but since humanity refused to go to the path anymore and the and this is a compassion of the, the godhead we have to suffer in order to eradicate these layers of uh, sanskaras, these thick, thick, heavy layers sitting dormant in our subconscious mind and uh, don't let us become free individuals. It doesn't allow us to enter the spiritual path. And if you cannot enter the spiritual path, we have no justification to exist at all. So, and, uh, such a case, such group individuals or individuals uh, go back to the square one, have to get uh, to make a restart from the spiritual evolution. And this is a real catastrophe. And it happens in the universe. You can uh, read between the lines of spiritual uh, histories and uh, what the gods have been saying about such things. It happens. Call it pralaya, ma pralaya, and all kinds of things like this. And this is due to the fact that there's too much ignorance, too much uh, darkness in the subconscious mind. At a certain point, this is the reason for all the wars on, on the planet. Actually, wars are raging everywhere, not only here in uh, Israel and Ukraine. There are hundreds and hundreds of wars all over the planet. Most of them we don't know because not the CNN guys are not there. There are wars all, all over Asia, almost everywhere. There are serious problems in, inside Russia, inside India, inside China, Arabic countries. They keep it with a steel fist, so we don't hear the CNN people. Uh, media are not allowed to enter there. They will lose their... Uh, lives if they will dare to broadcast something which is not permissible by the governments. So in the West, we have the usually economic wars, the selfish wars, everybody's pushing on everybody, grabbing for money. This is even worse than physical wars. We have mental wars and emotional wars and the serious drug problems, etc., etc. So all the situation of humanity is really not well at all. 
And uh, this is uh, only for the importance of our uh, responsibility. We have very serious res responsibility in this uh, respect. Anyway, I'm glad to see Jeff. I missed to say something to you last time concerning our uh, emotional and mental problems, which I said I have been dealing with this quite from the start. I didn't start uh, my uh, <clears throat> sojourn of this life uh, with uh, pink fork, but <laughs> with very dark gray lead fork, which took me years just to eject it from my mouth. And they, they, through these processes, I've learned quite a great deal, the problems of uh, mental and emotional problems and how to solve them because I knew quite, quite from the start, as soon as Baba walked into my life, that he is the only one who has the capabilities of uh, dealing with uh, my personal uh, issues, which he has been doing in a quite a remarkable way. But uh, of course, if we have uh, situations that we cannot cope with, we have to go somebody that this is his expertise, physical, mental, emotional, to help us uh, to come uh, back to balance, if we can. And uh, one of my cats has to check what I'm doing. Hey, you, go away. We have many cats. This is a <laughs> safe heaven cat. No, okay, you want to participate. Come on. Here you go. Okay. See, you became a fa famous Baba cat. No, go away now. We have uh, 10, 10, 20 of them coming and going all the time. And uh, <clears throat> that's what it is. I wrote an article about this on the problem uh, of health. It's on my website. I also have a personal website. I don't know if you know my Baba website, I, put, I placed uh, the solutions for health problems. That if you want to hear, we can discuss it a little bit. Concerning uh, physical problems, uh, <clears throat> I was being helped by uh, alternative medicine and a great deal with my late brother. My late brother was uh, a genius in uh, the search and research of the biology of, you, of the human body. And he knew how to solve problems that the science didn't you know. And the science dean was not interested with his research because he knew what to do to solve the problems. And the pharmaceutical industry, as he told me, and I know also, are not interested that we will be healed completely to the root and stay ill, not dead, ill for many years, consuming drugs. <laughs> They are not interested if, with the real healing. Even they can. Of course, uh, you go to the hospital. If you have an accident, they fix you up. They do marvelous work. But uh, all kinds of uh, little problem, problems uh, with, uh, uh, let's say, like uh, sugar uh, and many other problems, they don't really give a real solution. People can overcome uh, diabetes and can overcome uh, many issues physical, mental, and emotional, which uh, is, a, is science, physical science, is not capable or not really. <clears throat> and when I told my physicians, uh, I can uh, bring in an example, for example, I used to, due to hard work, and uh, not once uh, I fell on the ground uh, during uh, accidents or uh, had a very severe military training. So what's happening over the years, you get uh, cracks in the muscles. It happens to uh, all of us, naturally. But definitely, if you have some uh, accident, what is an accident, you triple off over something and you fall on the ground and you hit yourself. And then you, uh, uh, due to this accident, you have fracture, miniature fractures in your uh, muscles. 
in the, in the organ, in the tissues. So I suffered from a, such a problem for many years. And I consulted, of course, the physicians, etc. And the, they didn't have any solutions. They gave me injections. They gave me the, even suggested an operation. It was very doubtful it's going to work. And then one day I asked my brother what he thinks about this. He said, of course, you have to do this, what you have to do. My brother was a great fan of DHA, the main component of the omega-3 oils which you can buy it, omega-3. You have to see that there is a good concentration of uh, DHA. You will see DHA and EPA. DHA is crucial for our uh, brain health. It's very important. And we have to consume at least one gram every day, each person. We get a little bit through the nutrition, but it doesn't really get into the system properly. And you have to, he told me you have to take this every day between five to seven grams, which is like uh, 20 capsules every day. I bought it over the internet because in Israel it, it was very low, like 15% uh, each capsule, while abroad it was 50% 50, 50 of oil. To take it together with Ceylon, cinnamon from Ceylon, from Sri Lanka, and the uh, prunes, the dried prunes. You ask him why the dried prunes? The dried, dried prunes cons, contains enzyme, enzyme, or enzyme, I don't know how you pronounce it, an element which helps to mend fractures in the tissues. And what happened, uh, he told me to do this, I did, the procedure, and after a year and a half, all the pain I experienced for many years, I felt all the years as if I have rusty nails inside my shoulders. And one day, after a year and a half, everything just uh, disappeared. I uh, I don't feel any pain anymore, and this only for a long time. The point is with... Uh, the DHA, the this omega-3, this uh, many people uh, have awareness of this. Uh, you can buy it over the, the internet or from health food store. You have to see that there is a good concentration of a DHA, which is the main uh, ingredient. Some say it also contains what is it called EPA. And the EPA is supposed to be transferred to DHA in the body, but with the human body it hardly can do it. With the women, women can transfer it a little bit. The best uh, animals which are transferring, uh, uh, creating a good DHA are the chicken. So chicken eggs contain, if, if they're natural, free hormic chicken, you have a good concentration of DHA if you want it from natural resources. But the best is to take uh, these uh, capsules of oil. And the point with the Ceylon cinnamon, the c only in the Ceylon, the cinnamon doesn't contain a substance which is being called coumarin. Coumarin is a poisonous substance and it exists in the regular cinnamon which comes from East Asia, mainly from China. And this is not, they don't call it actually cinnamon, but Katsia. And this uh, substance, coumarin, is if you take a, a cinnamon in large quantities, it, it might damage your liver. It happened to people who read articles about healing diabetes with uh, cinnamon. They took, uh, let's say, a large amount of cinnamon every day, like a spoonful, and they got uh, damaged the liver. So you have to buy it from the uh, internet, sell on cinnamon, and together with the DHA and the prunes, it helps to improve your health, guarantee, or at least I experienced it. Of course, each person is different and uh, each person is responsible for his own issues. And I had many more problems if you would take my medical uh, record. Currently today, 
I don't take any drugs and I'm going to be 76 uh, in a few days. And uh, most of the people can be, can live long with a good shape, help humanity, not become a burden, have a good quality of uh, living. Um, and this is uh, substantial helps for humanity. Just want to ask you, you mentioned BHA, yes. Delon cinnamon, omega-3. What was the fourth one, Ezio? The fourth third item? one, the third one. There were three ingredients, prunes. You know what prunes. is a prune. Dried prunes contains a, a substance, enzyme. If so you wish, if you send me your email, I can send you the article in English. My brother wrote a whole book in French. He was living all his life in uh, Paris. Yes, what's lived... your address? Sorry? What is your email address? Um, I'll uh, write it down here on the chat. Okay. <clears throat> and could you also write down your website, please? Just a minute, one at a time. Or you can tell me, whatever is easiest. Um, it's going on. Well, just a minute, I'll type it in. Oh, it is, it's coming. Let's see your info. It's also, also my details on the directory. Here you are. I will copy that down very soon. Just to charge my computer. It's uh, it's on forty eight zero twelve dot net dot il. Yeah, if you just, I mean, all you have to do is press save chat. It should be on everybody's screen somewhere there. Save chat. What is this? Yeah, you put you put your uh, address in the chat. Yes. And I, if I people it. want to, if people want to send it, they have to just either copy it and paste it, and there's uh, at the very top, uh, it will have three dots, and it says save chat. So you just find the thing. Somewhere there, there'll be uh, three dots. You have to show chat, and then where the three dots are, it's you say save chat, and people press, copy press, put it on their own computer. I pressed on the three dots in my. You don't have to do anything. You already did it. I did it's it. Not, yeah, you already did it. Uh, okay. Your chat will be saved anyway. But I'm saying anybody there who wants to have that address, they can just press the save chat on their own computer. Okay. Anyway, okay. uh, my address be... is on the directory list of the Baba Zoom. When you yeah. enter the Baba Zoom, we have a directory, and uh, whomsoever is participating with the Baba Zoom, uh, his address uh, should be the, my address, my email address. Is there. Some of you know it. If somebody wants to communicate, they can send me a note, and uh, I'll be glad uh, to share what I have. <clears throat> My brother wrote uh, an entire book with all kinds of interesting uh, formulas and directives to solve all kinds of problems, which the physical science either doesn't know or not too much interested. And he wrote it in French and I translated the whole book. <clears throat> I got the PDF from the family after he passed away, it was printed after he passed away. And while he was uh, alive, I used to have long chats with him in the Skype and I recorded it and I have a few recordings of his I placed on the internet. And he was in a wonderful shape in the age of 88. I thought, I thought he would live to the 800, 200. <laughs> And he was sharp and intelligent till uh, the last moment, and uh, it was a big loss. Oh, oh. But uh, that's life. That's what it is. So I translated his book into English. 
Uh, of course, the family in, in, in France knows about this, his uh, wife. That I did it, I told her, I got the PDF and I wanted to read it in, uh, I don't read French. Uh, my French is very, very limited. I know how to say comment ça va, très bien, etc. And that was it, more or less. <laughs> and uh, I, I translated the whole thing with a special AI program. It went uh, quite well. And then I checked uh, each sentence in French against each sentence in English, and I did my best to verify ex expressions which I didn't understand. For the exam example, one of the good things, sir, uh, if you want, I can send you the book. Maybe I definitely can send you the articles in English because I translated the articles uh, he translated the articles from French to English, and I did English editing to it. He was, most of his life he was in France, so his English was not uh, at, at best, maybe. So I had to make uh, all kinds of corrections. And I did uh, translate it, uh, part of them into Hebrew, together with him, which was a very interesting learning period because I'm not a scientist and he was a quite a top scientist, very interesting uh, dealing with him. And uh, <clears throat> for example, he writes, he gives a prescription to minimize, to solve the problems of uh, blood pressure. And he suggested to drink beet juice, beet juice helps to reduce blood pressure. Alas, the problem contains a lot of sugar. He says in order to reduce the sugar in the juice, you have to cook it together with uh, yeast. I tried to do it, became a terrible taste, but most likely, but he passed away, so I couldn't ask him uh, <laughs> how to do it. But uh, you can drink it. And what it is, I'm uh, taking daily, uh, let's say, half a teaspoon of uh, Ceylon cinnamon. And from my experience, uh, one side, the uh, high level of sugar in the blood. And it went down after a few months of treatment with uh, Ceylon cinnamon. It helps to reduce the uh, problems of uh, too much sugar in the blood. Problem of, of the sugar that, uh, as uh, he told me, the body has to absorb the sugars to the cells within 15 seconds. If it doesn't go there right away, it starts creating problems. It started to, it will start to solidify on the uh, organs, how he called it, what it does is there's too much sugar in the body, it is start to fry the cells just the same as you fry meat in an oven with the sugar, you make it uh, crystallized. It looks very pretty and very tasty. This is what it does, too much sugar to our in internal organs. It, it, is, it is cooking us from within because sugar is fire, it is energy. So, the point is with juices and all, all these substances, we have to drink it slowly, moderately, so it will allow the body to digest it, and even better not to drink juices at all. It's because it goes straight to the blood stream. Better to eat the food, but with, the ju with beet juice, you want to cook it, I, I cook it for two hours, and then I drink it. This I'm doing weekly, I'm doing it already for a long time. I was a few years ago diagnosed with high blood pressure. And uh, after a couple of years of such treatment, it became normal again. I asked for, uh, approached the various ones uh, for this because my brother was not here anymore. <clears throat> but this recipe worked. Others uh, recipes didn't work. I approached uh, people who are uh, uh, alternative uh, physicians and they gave me formulas, I did this, and that it didn't work. This was only working, but also what is important to stay all the time under any circumstance with a solid mind, undisturbed, 
Khan, Baba speaking about this is this is really this is a first and main issue. And the last meeting, you ask me if I lose my uh, composure sometimes, and it seems that I'm still a human being, and so it does. But what it is after many years of training, which started at the end of 70s, when such a thing happens, I put myself back to centering. It takes me a few seconds to come back. What in the, in the past would take me months and sometimes years to come back to alignment, keep myself centered and focused. It's, it is a practice. That's why we are in this world, we, we in this body, and we have this opportunity to practicing all these problems. So that's why we are here. We can practice it only on, in this physical world. We can practice it in the spiritual world. Spirit, this is uh, this world is a school of the universe. That's the purpose of this uh, world, this physical world. This is the only place where we can uh, study, increase our consciousness, and serve the creation. The many of us are eager to quit this world, be liberated, move on to some, uh, enjoy some uh, the celestial music on the, the, some pink clouds. I have no idea what it is. For me, it's a total uh, imagination. I'm not interested with this at all. This is a place of action. This is a place of the avatar and the perfect masters. And uh, each time I hear about this, that the folks want to, hoping uh, just to go away from here, feel sorry about this because they're missing the opportunity and they're willing to come back here again and again till they will, uh, they will, be, will matriculate their studies in the school of the universe. That's where we are. It's, it's very important. It's critically important. And we are, the school is open due to the effect of the perfect master's avatar. Uh, wish to help those few uh, willing to take spiritual responsibility and uh, heal themselves. And when I heal myself, I heal the humanity because I have been connected with endless uh, humans since the beginning or, or in entities, mineral, vegetable, these are all uh, entities, these are all divine beings. Even science doesn't understand, it. nothing is. Uh, no, uh, there's no such a thing as there is a particle without a consciousness. Everything is alive. And uh, my duty is, up, is to uplift all these things. But first I have to uplift myself and come to some minimum position, not maximum position. And when I come to minimum positions that I'm more or less uh, under control, all my component, my internal and external components are in uh, tune, then I can uh, start to help uh, the creation, but I can start help the creation, even though the, everything is all right with, with uh, my uh, external and internal components. I can, uh, can stay, accept uh, my uh, sicknesses uh, cheerfully and say that since I'm uh, undergoing a, a sickness, physical or mental or emotional, and I cope with this cheerfully, I help all those who suffer from this uh, symptom and they cannot cope with this cheerfully. When I copy the problem cheerfully, I send them a wave of hope. The backstage of, uh, because we are all connected uh, in the subconscious minds. We, in subconscious minds, we are all one, but we totally forgot about this. We are on a very, very low ebb. We lost uh, the sense of unity. In, 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 human, in humanity in a very tragic uh, situation, but uh, we never uh, lose hope. You see, I, most of the time yeah, I'm coming with a good mood, I believe. But terribly cheerful in spite of uh, I unfold the people who suffer in this world. I'm on the Israeli side, Baba didn't place me on the Arab side, even though I'm dealing with the Sanskaric problems of the Arabic side, it's automatic as I explained in the past. And uh, I've been doing some work, for example, with hostages. I'm doing, I have been doing some kind of work. What exactly I am doing, I unfold them. 
inside me. <clears throat> if I unfold the, the suffering of the Arab fellows, and I can say, in a way I do, in a way this is not my jurisdiction. My jurisdiction is Baba placed me on the Israeli side. He would place me in Kamat Shatka, he would take care of Kamat Shatkans or uh, Somalians or God knows what. That's what this is, the decision. That's his uh, instruction training for my person. I have to deal with this problematic uh, organ of humanity, which some people call uh, Judaism or Israelis or whatever. It's, it's, of course, we have those serious internal problems here. It's some of this you see on the media, most of, most of it you have no idea whatsoever because people will never tell the truth. And, uh, but since I live here and uh, I've had uh, endless relations <clears throat> with many sectors of the community, and this happened through this strange occupation I've had since Baba walked into my life, 72, 70, 72 till 73, I was uh, in communication, I was working as a radio operator. I was trained as a radio operator in communication in the Israeli army. And after, sorry, after the army, uh, one of my uh, friends recruited me to the police force. You won't believe it, but I was a policeman for three and a half years in communication. I was not uh, wearing uniform, uh, chasing the criminals. Uh, I was do doing communications, sending telegrams, uh, delivering uh, over the radio, etc. And, uh, and I was quite comfortable there. I didn't have any special aspirations. But when Baba walked into my life, he pushed me out of this uh, comf comfortable nook pushed me uh, <clears throat> to one of the hardest occupations at all, which is contracting, uh, producing uh, items in the physical world. I started with carpentry. And uh, of course, I had no idea, I had no experience whatsoever how to deal with the commercial and physical world. My family didn't, have, uh, didn't come from a family of uh, experts in this regard. It's a whole big deal, which I have been studying all my life. And uh, this gave me a deep outlook. This noise is coming from the cats who are running on my roof here. <laughs> I have in the garden a gazebo. Let's see it. See it a little bit. Okay. They presumably have as a season, so they're having uh, ch chasing the girls now, or something like this. I guess you hear them a little bit. It disturbs you, so I have, uh, have to chase them away. I can uh, sprinkle water over them and they will run away. <laughs> but it'll be a fun background for a change. You did this work, physical work, as a contracting. I, I was doing for people, let's say, cabinets, shelves, uh, and I eventually learned how even how to build uh, an entire house. I can could take a skill, like uh, our home here. I re did everything before we moved here six, seven years ago. I did the entire renovation by myself with another person. We did everything, which you can think of. Uh, the concrete, the metal, the wood, everything. I have, I have, I have done everything by myself. Now this uh, work, what it does, <clears throat> I was working for people. Then I go to your home, for example, and spend a few days, a few weeks with you, inside you, together with you, we become a family. Then eventually I really experience your life. I come at seven in the morning, I leave at seven in the evening, sharing with you all day. So things happen. And thus, I shared with thousands, many, quite a few thousands of people over the years, from all sexes, from secular Arabs. I had, for example, an Arabic team from the early 80s, because I needed uh, workers. I was working in what you call the territories. While I was working in the territories, uh, work, the workers in the neighborhood were, would come from the Arabic villages in the neighborhood. 
and I was working uh, all over the place. And uh, <clears throat> often I would uh, go to the village and text them in the morning and we would drive to work. And in the evening I would bring them back to their homes. And when I come back to Arabic house in uh, the evening, it's customary and this is an honor to dine with the family, which was really lovely. We Israelis <laughs> don't have such a warm, warm heart like uh, the Arabs have this. It was really lovely. I really appreciate it till now. I had uh, such uh, time in a refugee camp. I had workers from a refugee camp. They, of course, uh, were deported during the 1948 war. And they were my employees. And every evening, I would bring them home to the refugee camp, supposedly. The, most of them had better houses than we have. You don't call it a refugee camp. This wasn't a refugee camp. This was tents and uh, shacks. No, they, they had the nice uh, stone houses, etc. They, they were not uh, miserable at all. But they were under the protection of the United Nations. They would get rations and they had free education, free uh, medical uh, aid or whatever they needed. And nobody was uh, allowed to harass them. <laughs> under the supervision of the United Nations. And in the evenings, I would, I would uh, bring them home, I was sitting in the refugee camp, and we would have a conversation. And they taught me Arabic, these guys, because they didn't know Hebrew. They didn't know Hebrew at all. So I had to study Arabic quite quickly. Lutfi understands what I'm saying. <laughs> and I was speaking Arabic with them uh, all day. Low Arabic, simple uh, Palestinian Arabic, as we call it. But good enough, they go it by. And uh, we were speaking on uh, all issues. <clears throat> so this is just uh, how many times I visited Arabic homes. And I estimate over 20 years, between 2,000, 4,000 times visits to Arabic all over the, the in in uh, <clears throat> what we call Hebron, south of uh, the West Bank, the, many places in the West Bank, East Jerusalem. Uh, in the East Jerusalem, I had connection with one of the most respectable uh, uh, Arabic uh, families in East Jerusalem. They were so respectable that the, the role was to uh, fire the cannon during the Ramadan when the the fast is over in the evening, the shooting the a cannon. So the people will know that the feast, the fast is over so they can go to it. So that was their uh, role. And of course, uh, I spent much time with, uh, as I said, with the Jewish uh, community, secular, uh, orthodox, uh, uh, all sectors of life all over the country, hundreds and thousands of people. I spent some uh, intimate time with them. And uh, already from 73, four onwards, I knew that I'm dealing with sanskars. Even the term sanskars was not known to me. Baba, quite from the start, as soon as he walked into my life, as, as I said, and as soon as I surrendered to him, according to the nature of this uh, surrenderance, he didn't tell me this, but this is my understanding, that he started uh, to work on my personal sanskars, and then eventually from 76 on, started to give me personal tutoring how to deal with sanskars. This is quite a very big deal. Very, very big deal. And I've been there dealing with... Uh, most acute and dangerous sanskars, because when I start to work on it, the power of his love is like the sun. The sun is being reflected on the thick, dry layers of the subconscious mind, which are not accessible over eons and billions and billions of years, years of active participation in ignorance, in the darkness, creating bad things what we call bad things or whatever. And only the divine, the, the fire of divine love can melt these layers and evaporate them. And this process was 
quite painful and actually I was experiencing on a daily basis when these layers were being melted as if all kinds of demons were surfacing and I had to eject them. They take it as a, you know, each time a demon would supposedly in brackets, it's not a demon, it's some kind of strange energy feeling uh, whatever it is. There was nothing sterile, everything was internal. And Baba told me, whatever comes into your consciousness, you, you put as if you, you would just give it to me. So I had to do it all day. And he was all the time sitting on my head constantly, keep on giving everything to me. For years on, he, he, he didn't leave me alone for a day with this uh, kind of work. Erasing some scars all the time. So uh, eventually, after 15, 20 years, it became automatic. In the beginning, I, I was very conscious about this kind of work. And uh, after uh, 15, 20 years, more or less, it became more and more automatic. And the part of this uh, training, I had to go to Merabad and other places uh, like a marriage center, where some scars, some scars are being uh, evaporated in the Samadhi. Samadhi, I used to call it a sanskaric laundromat because each time I would come to Merabad, my head was exploding from all these vibrations. I was sitting in the Samadhi for 10, 15 minutes, getting out of it, uh, <laughs> totally washed up. Everything would uh, dis disappear, had a fresh start. It was wonderful. So very important to go there. And I believe the Samadhi is still active. It's very important for all of us to go there. It's the main healing uh, place on earth. That's my experience. I believe the many Baba Lovers also experienced it. Okay. Anything else you will wish to deal with? Do you go every year, Ezion? I used to go each year. Last time I went, we went there, 2015. And since then, eight years, I didn't go. I think before that, we we participated in the, the last birthday of Baoji. Before that, I used to go each year or twice a year. So there was a period. From 2002, Bauji invited us to move to Merabad. As I used to come a few times a year to make preparations, but eventually the boss decided I should stay in Israel. And uh, I have to do what he wants. <laughs> this is my uh, obligation, my duty, whatever he wants, this is uh, what I have to do. Of course, I would be delighted to stay in Merabad where I was. Uh, uh, helpful and practical. It, it was good to work with Ted. I have to do some uh, artwork for the new MPR. I, I count the doors. You could see it in a few meetings before. It's on my website also, a personal website. I have a business website. It appears uh, the carved doors, which I did. It doesn't matter. I will think it would be nice to stay there and uh, work uh, only for Baba in Merabad would be enjoyable. But uh, what he wants, this is what uh, what I want eventually, to work for him and serve his cause and uh, do whatever he wants me to do. That's uh, my uh, commitment. There's no question about this. After 50 years of uh, work, which was not uh, exactly a picnic, uh, there no question that uh, this is my commitment. This is what I have been doing and I will continue doing it. I believe he will finish this uh, sojourn on earth as long as it takes. That's his decision, whatever he wants. That's my life. And this I am, uh, I would, uh, I share, why I'm sharing it with the community, all these uh, stories to encourage people because many people are doubtful about uh, Baba, and uh, just before we started this meeting, spoke with the UE, and uh, I had a, a few a while ago, a few months ago, I spoke with uh, one of the people who got acquainted with Mayor Baba through one of my booklets, and they say Baba gave all these promises, he will break his silence and manifest, will be a world of peace and this and that, and because the Baba didn't uh, fulfill his promises in the Presumably, lost his belief in him. 
And I didn't say much about this, but what I said to you <laughs> this evening, that uh, this, this, what I have seen, what Baba is doing is no more but uh, a mirror before us, that we are the ones who are supposed to break the, the silence and manifest as the spiritual beings. This is our uh, arena and not uh, Baba's. He came uh, to keep uh, the door of opportunity open. That's my understanding. And we have to walk in and do the walks. He is not going to do the walk. He has no, he has nothing to manifest. He is manifesting all the time. If he is whatever he is, there's no need for him to manifest. And if he is whatever he is, he has no silence to break. As far as my concern, all this silence, all these years of silence, have been a mirror before us. As I will have some understanding. And unfortunately, I think many don't understand what it means. This what eventually, why over the years I grasp that this is what Baba have been doing, and the in former incarnations, like the crucifixions, that the whole thing was a mirror before us. That we didn't crucify the Lord, we in Golgotha we crucified ourselves. Guess what happened? When we allowed the Lord to be crucified, we actually, we, humanity, chose the path of crucifixion. That's why there's uh, such an immense suffering. We, we expect after each advent uh, that the suffering will be lessened and humanity will move into peaceful uh, lines, but it's not happening. And see what's happening in the world. Uh, Baba promised us a long way uh, period of peace and, and every all countries are gearing up increasing the production of uh, weapons everybody is afraid of everybody the west was uh, hopefully peaceful for a few decades and now they realize they are under a threat a very very serious threat so many countries in the world have been producing tremendous uh, armies and tremendous weapons to, in order to overtake uh, the West. They have to gear up. And that's a real shame, but that's part of the game. And it is, uh, to my understanding, the wars, I've told this to people also in my country, that the wars are no more but a mirror for us, spiritual people, that so we are not uh, in place spiritually. And it will stay like this. This is a very hard, uh, I admit it's a hard, harsh message. But we have to face the mirror and look at it. If we, if we want to heal humanity, we have to look at the truth. We have to face it. That's what I have to say on this subject. <laughs> and to stay cheerful no matter what. Even if the world has come to an end, we stay cheerful and uh, I trust we live uh, there are enough uh, people who are willing and uh, doing a good work to justify the ongoing march of uh, humanity or those who deserve it. Uh, and we totally leave it to the direction, directive of the Godhead. We don't need to worry about anything. I'm not concerned about uh, what's going to be, wars, destruction. It's not in my mind at all. I'm not concerned about this. I share the suffering of the people and I elevate it through my internal work. And uh, to help them, I have to stay focused and cheerful. And this is a remedy for the people who suffer. And I'm dealing uh, with the suffering of the people on a daily basis wherever I go, people are suffering. Everywhere. When I walk in the street, I see, look at the face, I see the suffering. When I walk in the, in the street and I see a person, automatically, I enfold the person and I send him to Baba. Now this person is some stranger in the street, which I saw him once and I will never see him again. That was his opportunity to come uh, through my person to have some audience with, with the divine beloved because uh, he has no connection. I have the connection. So I gave that particular person a particular issue, or even a cat in the street, whatever there is. I gave it to Baba. And they instructed me, I cannot help the people. 
Uh, as long as they don't surrender to me, because otherwise I will violate their free will. And this is a sacred, sacred principle in the creation. As long as we don't approach him and ask him for his help, his uh, proper way of surrenderance without motive, he cannot help us. But since I surrender to him till uh, whatsoever degree, I can help others because I, I have been co connected to all, all of humanity as a human being. We are, we are one family. We are, each one of us is a cell in, in the body of humanity. So this is my role. And the role of each one of us who are connected to the avatar, to the degree, we, it doesn't matter which degree, to transform this world, to give it to him. And this is the scene of the Garden of Eden. What happens there? We turn our back to the law. The law, we committed this supposedly, we made a mistake, we made a blunder. We violated the rules for whatever reason. Then he comes uh, with a good mood. That's what's written in the Bible. Hey, here, guys, I'm here. Everything is fine. I'm going, we'll fix everything. Then we became ashamed. And it, we actually told him, no thanks, we'll fix it by ourselves. And that's that's the way it looks, this world, because we're trying to fix it by ourselves, which we cannot do. It's not possible for us humans to fix uh, this complicated world. The, <clears throat> the pyramid is everything goes back and forth, millions and billions of years old. We, we cannot see it. The, we, Humanity is a science, is a, is a great visionaries. They cannot say the in and outs of creation and how to heal humanity. Only the perfect masters and the avatar. They, we have to bring them back. Where are the perfect masters now? Where are they working? We don't know. But if we have this communi communication and communication with avatar, we can bring him to the world. And they say each one of us can do it. We don't need to be an advanced person. We, each, we are doing it, many of us are doing it because we are thinking about it. We bring it to our life in whatever fashion. We, it looks uh, trivial and uh, some kind of a ceremonial. What you hear is a, is a plane. You hear a plane? It's a part of the world. It's presumably a surveillance plane. It's flying above the city since the beginning of the war. I presume it's monitoring what's going on with the cameras. Okay, if so, I wish you we can continue with sharing. Oh, because we spent an hour already. Yes, Jeff. I can feel the risk much on your mind. <laughs> One question does come up in the moment. How do you, when you think of Netanyahu and when you think of what he did, when you think of the motives and what you think of what he's doing now, I can't stay neutral. I feel, yes. I feel, a, I feel, in English words, I feel very bad the way Netanyahu handled all of this. He allowed Hamas to come in and murder Israelis, and he is murdering tens of thousands of Palestinians. And when I think about this, I think of Putin doing the same thing. I think of President w George W. Bush doing this in Iraq. Hey. I, think of, okay. I think of the Vietnam War with Nixon killing the people of Vietnam. But in the immediate right now, and I realize all these guys are making very few people very wealthy. They love war because they make a tremendous amount of money on it, certain right. people. 
It's true. Yeah, but this is the reason. This, yeah. yeah, this uh, is the cause of this is the cause of most of the world's plain business. There are people behind this. The mechanism of war because it, it's a, it's a great money makers, multi trillion business. So people die on the way. They don't care. Uh, both sides don't care. Does it make you feel? I'm looking for the word uncomfortable. I I know this word is much more precise than uncomfortable, but you know when I see the destruction of Palestine or any of the countries where there's war, but in, in our immediate situation now, how do you handle your feelings about that? Or do you just look at it and say, this is the way it is. Bob is running the show. I have no control what Netanyahu is doing. I have not, no control what Hamas is doing. This is happening because God is handling it and therefore, Baba said, not, my, not my will, but thy will, God. How do you handle this? Um, How do you process? Much, yes, of course. I'll be glad to try to uh, uh, answer. Since I live here all my life, this con constant wars, it's a non-stop struggle, non-stop wars. Since I was born 48, we don't stop fighting with each other. We have been fighting humanity, fighting with each other, according to science, 12,000 years, non-stop. Not a day of, not a single day, we didn't stop killing each other. This is a tragedy of humanity that we lost away. It is not something new. And uh, we're trying to solve our problems, all of us, uh, with the human might, with you, this what we call human might, with the physical strength, because we lost all of us, or most of us, the spiritual understanding how to bring uh, harmony and the balance to the affairs of uh, humanity. And practically, personally, I'm not and have no much interest with Mr. Netanyahu. He's not in my mind. Baba is in my mind. The Lord is in my mind. And then I have been working on all these impressions and scars naturally, automatically. And I, it's crucially important while I'm doing this work, I stay centered, composed and serene. Otherwise, my, my work has no value if I get upset. Why Mr. Netanyahu in, in power? This I have no idea. Or other leaders, if it has a spiritual importance or not, I have no idea. I give it very little importance to all these human leaders. The, Netanyahu was elected democratically. The people, the millions of people who are his friends, large community, and everything went according to the book. Nobody's claiming that uh, the last elections were corrupted. Nobody even said it, and he, and he didn't. This is the will of the people, as you say it in the worst. If this is a, is a good system, it's actually a small the parties <coughs> controlling them, make their demands against the big parties. This is not democracy. This is not the rule of the majority. And the majority of the people, what they are, the most of them are selfish. They want to be comfortable. They have no spiritual understanding unless they are religious or spiritual like us. But we spiritual people have no political aspirations. We are not going to impose any system on anyone like the religions have been doing. And uh, personally, take a, technically, I have no say. I have nothing to do about this. This is not, I'm aware of all this. I'm aware of everything which you are saying. I'm aware of uh, this. Uh, the plight of the people. 
And then silently behind the veil, I have been doing whatever I have been instructed to do over the years. And it is not, uh, can, it cannot be seen on surface of things. Uh, if one day here in the Middle East will come to some peaceful resolution, some balance between the nations, uh, it's hard to say. I'm not sure if it's in the offing. Uh, this issue is not, uh, didn't happen in just the past hundred years, as I said. This, these issues of the internal hatreds and the breakdown of the family of manhood is uh, going on for a long, a long time. Thousands and ten thousands of years when lost the sense that we are a family. That we are one body and each one of us is a cell in the human body. And just like our body, which has 50 trillion cells, and each cell is a vital part of who am I eventually. The manifestation, the physical manifestation of who am I, due to the fact that I have 50 trillion subjects who are working with uh, harmony. And if this internal harmony will be disrupted, then you will say that uh, my body uh, or my mental apparatus will become sick because uh, these subjects of mine start to make an internal rebellion, maybe demanding uh, some <laughs> raise in their salaries or something, like humans have been doing. And I understand uh, your heart, you know, it hurts, and I can feel it. And uh, the only remedy is, uh, the only real is a remedy for myself is focus on the beloved. When I get uh, off-centered, uh, disturbed or upset, then I sit myself and refocus Keep on working internally till I resume my inner balance and focusing and serenity and calmness with him. Otherwise, first I am of no use and no help for the community and humanity. And I'm not doing his work. This, this is basic. And it takes practice. I was not born like this. It took many years of practice and practice and practice to stay focused, focused, and centered. And when you practice, when you go off on a tangent, which happens due to practice, you immediately come back to your position. It takes work and practice, part of this uh, what I have uh, um, studied and uh, succeeded to achieve. I placed on my website, I wrote a short article, Heart Realm Maintenance. How I, I published it, I wrote it after 25 years of daily practice. Because I have realized that it's working. And then my inner uh, burden when it was diminishing and my sight, my vision became clearer, I became more relaxed, I became more composed, more compassionate, and more helpful for humanity. If I have all this internal burden of hatreds, practically I was working to eliminate hatreds. So my inner instruction, you have to keep on working till you will feel any grudge whatsoever to any anyone, anything. Doesn't matter what they did. So I don't feel grudge now towards the uh, Hamas people. I don't feel anything of enmity. So I, if I don't feel any enmity towards anyone, and I don't blame anyone, in, sp in spite of the horrible things they have done and horrible things are being inflicted on them, with this attitude, I keep a path, I keep the opportunity of healing the situation. How did you let go of your enmity, your end, that word, I'm not saying it right, but how did you let go of that enmity that you just mentioned? How did you let go of that? Only the avatar can do it by focusing on him 
and uh, walking with his guidance of my own accord. I said it in past uh, sessions. I have realized that I cannot do it. I tried to straight, straighten up some internal uh, problems and it, it failed. Then Baba stepped in. He decided to step in. I didn't ask him. Or maybe I asked uh, because he, uh, he is in my consciousness uh, most of the time, but, but they're pulling and I didn't know what to do. Then he walked in deliberately and it's all this in the 70s and early 80s. He's, uh, he, was, he's, he was almost physical for me. I, know, I, didn't, I didn't see him uh, like this, but I felt, uh, felt his presence. Of, in a, the, the guidelines were obvious, what, how to do the work, the internal work. And uh, I'm talking about decades and decades of uh, arduous uh, practice and work, dealing with all these uh, bad things, till you reach uh, a balance. And we have to do this work. It's not going to happen uh, from day to day. But uh, without him, I, I won't be able to do it. It's not by willpower. It's not possible. What I have been uh, dealing with, the human being uh, cannot deal with uh, what you call human power. I've seen no people with uh, very strong uh, minds, like uh, army generals, very strong uh, minded people. One who, are, who stay calm and relax under fire. I've been uh, through it many times and I admire such people. You stay calm and you handle the situation, relaxed, and you do your job. This is uh, presumably some of these guys were in former lifespans, were trained by uh, advanced uh, souls, would be. That's this I can say in retrospect. And we know that many of Baba's Mandali were uh, army people in the past. There were quite a few of them. Army training is uh, one of the best uh, spiritual training. I have been into one of the toughest Israeli units in 66. Tank Brigade number seven. This was. Uh, Talking about uh, the Six Day War, this was this tank brigade was a spitz, as we call it in German, of the Israeli spearhead. They really took the main brunt of the war. And, uh, we did a very hard work. That, uh, those days, not like today, the Israeli army was a real army. Today it became a soap army. <laughs> I don't know what, what did they do with it today. Army, no, I have been a fighter in the army. What's happening now? It's a joke. Those days, 40 years ago, we had such a skirmish with Hamas. In a couple of weeks, everything would be over. Seven months against us, uh, 10, 20,000 people. Well, what's going on? It's ridiculous. It's bad for us, bad for the, the poor Arabs. What do you think we enjoyed? Destroying our... 80% of uh, Gaza is, is in the shambles. Everything is ruins. If if there was somebody that could make peace between Hamas, the Palestinians, and the Israelis, what happened to President Sadat? Yes, when he was Sadat. president of Egypt. That he was assassinated yes. by he the extreme assassinated. extreme people, the Hamas people. They, what so, they call the Muslim Brotherhood, they killed him. They were so against anybody, yes. anybody who makes peace between, if there is another person like President Sadat to begin to make real peace, they'll probably murder her or him. Yeah, but the peace can be only in my heart. It starts with me. And these are political arrangements. Uh, is to start, this can be only in each one of us. You want a physical peace, they will stop the bloodshed. But the war, as I understood it and said before, is a reflection that the spiritual work of the spiritual people is not being handled. We don't have the spiritual government on earth to direct 
all these impulses and co compulsions and the, the humanity is in a deep ignorance. There is no beacon or there is no compass of spirituality on earth. And the, the few, what the Bible lovers are doing in this respect, hardly anything, nothing. I spoke with you just recently, with just now, I spoke with you about this, asking, what are we as Baba lovers have been doing for the world? Where are the spiritual centers? What message, messages are coming from the Meraba, this Mayor Center, Australia, the Sufis? Nothing is coming. What happened to all, the, all this uh, wonderful community? Is a wonderful people, wonderful, the, the best uh, uh, spiritual training, the best uh, uh, discourse has ever given to humanity, and we, as a Baba Love, is uh, failing behind. I know a few other spiritual communities. Let's say uh, directly I came to Baba Susan Anthroposophy of Rudolf Stein. And there are a few thousands of them in Israel and they get together. They have meetings uh, participating uh, 10, 20, 40 people in uh, Zoom meetings. And here in Israel, I don't have any Zoom meeting with anyone. In, even I invited uh, the Baba Lovers to share. They don't want to share. There were 100 uh, Israelis who went to Merabad. Where are they? Suppose they don't like my person, but uh, this is the issue to like my person. <laughs> what is my about my person? <laughs> don't need to like me or not to like me. This is non issue. And the trust through so steam and approved is that my work, printing books, is as best. So buy the books at least and leave me alone. But they, even the books, they're not interested with anything. The hundred, the hundred yes. Israelis went to Merabat, yes. As I told me they, this the, they don't want to get together sometimes, even uh, online. We used, with we used to, get, uh, to get together during the 90s. We had uh, some uh, big gatherings, so, like, let's say between 10 to 30 sometimes. And uh, what happened? Uh, there was this uh, gentleman from Britain by the name of David C Cousins. He was a mystic, supposedly advanced soul. And he had these uh, emissaries in Israel, and he said that Meir Baba is one of the aspects of the avatar. And he said in his book, I read his book, there's a five aspects of the avatar. And one of them is Satya Sai Baba and uh, Babaji and a few others. He gave five names. Oh, question. And he only, when he said, yes, when he yes. said, when he said Satya Sai Baba, which Satya Sai Baba? The Satya Sai Baba. From way back or the one that died about 20 years ago or 10 years ago? Sai Baba never was called Satya. Sai Baba, the Baba's master, is Sai Baba of Shiridi. I'm talking about the one who called him the reincarnation of, of Sai Baba. And when Baba was asked about this, his answer was, how could it be the perfect master comes back? He they never come back. That was Baba's answer when he was questioned about uh, Satya. He said, Probably uh, in Bangalore. Yeah, there was, it is in the record that uh, Baba was questioned about this. And the, some of Satya, I think I remember it, some of his disciples uh, of Satya came to Baba and asked him, is Satya true? And Baba said to them, yes, yes. Baba was sometimes compassionate and polite. But he turned to Adi and he told Adi that the Satya is no more but a tantric. He's making all kinds of, uh, you know, like our Yui making all kinds of tricks. <laughs> but we know that Yui is doing it just for fun. He doesn't pose like making miracles. But uh, <laughs> it was a juggler. Or maybe he had uh, developed seed hisses and he concocting all kinds of things. He was was doing like this and there was a, a gold ring which he would give to people anyway he was a, a multi-millionaire there was no problem for him to keep a hidden in his uh, sleeve a few golden rings and uh, bring it out and give it to that's, the people have yes that's that's, that's the one i was asking you really about yes that particular satya sai baba yeah because i know many many people from years ago went to him 
They thought Baba he Lavis. was... Baba Lavis, uh, Oh, no, not, not Baba Lavis, but other people I knew yes. from a meditation group I used to go to with a woman named Hilda, a very lovely human being. And I saw the I saw videos of Sai Baba materializing the Vibhuti. Yes. But it turns out, you know, we're not supposed to gossip. On the other hand, when you hear things that would be important to know to be protective of other people because some of these so-called gurus there was a lot of information a lot of information about criminal activity of uh, satya oh, oh, oh yes specifically i found this very hard to believe but i learned this about 12, 14 years ago. He was a pedophile. Yes. There was somebody who managed to escape and they complained about this. He was a pedophile and he, many, many devotees of Sai Baba put this, uh, they, they, they put emails out about what happened, that they were leaving him. And, uh, That's a, it's a very serious assault on someone. Such, such things are happening all the time all over the world, even currently. The many yes. frauds. Now, what was that this particular group was very charming, and uh, you would love all of them, very beautiful people. And uh, I got to know them 1994 or five. One of them called me. They wanted to go to Meir Abad because the master said the Meir Baba is one of the aspects of the avatar. They wanted to go to Meir Abad and ask uh, directives for me. They had the director, uh, her name Maureen Mack. She was British and she was a disciple of uh, uh, the master, David Cousins, and she was uh, nominated as the sixth plain master. Whatever. I don't think she was any master of anything. She was a nice person and uh, she was knowledgeable and this and that. So they went to Merabad was a group of uh, nine or ten or more people, a large group, beautiful, nice people. Really believe me, I, I knew all of them at that time. The money was a struck and said, at last we have a Baba group in Israel. But I didn't say, comment anything to money about this. It came to me inadvertently. Somebody told me, me at that time that money exclaimed this in public. And I never said, I wrote a letter to money, money, my dear money, you're completely mistaken. I didn't want to hurt her feeling. I didn't want to interfere. I don't know what, what Baba influences her. It's none of my business. She was a chairman. Uh, she's my darling sister, and uh, I don't need to stick my nose everywhere. But what sooner or later, mistaken? yes. What was she mistaken about, Mani? Sorry, dear? You said Mani was mistaken. Um, Mani said at last she saw this beautiful group coming to Merabat. Right. Beautiful people said at last, because uh, at that time it was only me and uh, Michal Namo Sivan. We are not two uh, <laughs> great Baba lovers, to say the least. <coughs> not too impressive. I have never posed as a spiritual person. And the Baba uh, decided I will inherit the. Jerusalem Baba Center from his first disciple in Israel. I didn't make the decision. And uh, some people, uh, presumably, naturally, thought it should be. <laughs> and actually, I didn't know how to run a group of people and uh, to build the uh, centers and the uh, communities. I have no idea how to do it till now. Because if people wanted to get together, wonderful. But I'm not, uh, I've never played the leading role. I'm part of the, I'm just a guy like everybody else. I've never posed as a director, spiritual director, thanks heaven. That's, uh, that's not a clever thing to do. 
And what happened eventually, after a while, we used to get together, this group in Israel, when they came back. But I read the book of uh, their mentor. He disappeared from the internet, uh, David Cousins. He was affecting the Baba Lovers. He had a, the had an agent in Meherabad who was working to recruit Baba Lovers to the group. And in Meher Center, I was told. Of course, I've never said anything to anyone because I uh, don't want to get involved with these things. And Baba Lavas decided that they uh, want to leave Baba and go to another master. That's their decision. We shouldn't uh, do anything to influence it. They have to stay free for their decisions. It's up to them. Each person has to make his own decisions. And this will constitute his uh, further uh, uh, ongoing march. But of course, uh, to leave uh, the avatar of the age and to choose uh, some uh, second-hand uh, master who is not a master at all, it's a tragedy. I see it as a tragedy, but uh, I, can, I, can, I see it and I cannot say a word. I cannot say anything because I cannot influence. As a, as a master, I don't have the authority. Baba has the authority. The perfect master has the authority. I, I am not uh, this one and I have no authority, but I can never... Uh, Warn the people like in this group. In people, the real, yes. People have misperceptions. They, their duality, they don't see clearly. Even the fellow you said was the mystic from England who spoke highly of Sai Baba or Puttaparthi, India. Yes. For him to claim. Great he, claimed, he claimed eventually, I was told, he declared himself as God realized. I read his book, <laughs> God realized. This is uh, somebody who is the uh, office of uh, Master Moses. Read the Genesis, take the book of Genesis, and this is a work of, of uh, advanced soul writing it under the directive of the avatar. Master Moses and his avatar were sitting together and writing this uh, wonderful book together. And he, he take this book and take the other books and put it against each other. And then you will see. You I, have a question. see. I have a question I've thought about, and you're the perfect person to ask. And you've answered wonderfully my questions. Why, when they're speaking about the avataric incarnations where they mentioned may have Baba, Jesus, Buddha, Ram, Krishna. Why don't they mention Abraham? Why don't they mention Adam? They How did. come those do they, they really? Baba, uh, to my knowledge, Baba said somewhere else that Abraham was uh, also an avatar. And when but, I, I when I was I told you I have been writing a book about this and uh, our past sessions the past few weeks Myself and my two friends reading these uh, chapters I wrote, I wrote Baba wrote. That's the truth, not me. This doesn't know anything, this uh, this uh, instrument. It's an instrument, it's a pen, which is writing, <clears throat> because what uh, was written there, so there, we were working on the chapters of Abraham. And when you, uh, I was reading, I, can, <clears throat> I have been translating into English. I can send you the file, you can look at it. If you want, and we can discuss it. It's pleasure. There are some revelations there which were never told before about the Genesis and the Exodus. These are spiritual, highly the highest spiritual books to my understanding ever given to humanity. And they're not possible to translate it. It's not possible. All the translations are wrong. It's not. Uh, you know why? Yes. Do you know yeah. why Abraham? Moses and Adam, they never mentioned by any of the Baba lovers at any gatherings. You know, sometimes there's a conversation. There are songs, there are conversations. Well, I, I, I don't know, because... Uh, um, I'm just curious, we, why? We Baba lovers, we have uh, we developing traditions. We take the books of uh, the main... Uh, when Baba was alive, he just uh, seldom here and there, he touched uh, 
when the movie, the Ten Commandments of Cecil B. DeMille came to the movies, he sent the Mandalay to watch it. He said the script is accurate and Master Moses was a sixth plane master and when he passed away, he achieved realization, whatever that is. And when the Pharaoh, the Pharaoh was uh, chasing him uh, to death, the Pharaoh regretted the uh, harassing the Israelites and on his deathbed, he took Moses' day before. And this is in the movie. He was saying, Moses, 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 and he died. And Baba said, when uh, the Pharaoh explained Moses three times, he achieved God the realization. The Pharaoh. That's Baba said. So the Baba Lafa is all Baba Lafa. They have the traditions, and it's a, some kind of the. Um, I don't think we are, have been developing a, some organic cult or, organization. Nobody uh, There were, have been, I think, a few attempts to consolidate a ministry, organized ministry with officers and sergeants, but it kept on failing. <laughs> it's not working at uh, this advent. While uh, the advent of uh, Jesus, the, his mandali, who <laughs> all ran away on him, <laughs> you know, the, that's the uh, scriptures in the New Testament. All the mandali ran away the, for their lives, discarded their beloved. That's a fact. So this is a spiritual fact. And they, they, were, very, they were frightened for their own lives. They yeah. Were very... <clears throat> And there and were, also, and the disciples, and also, of, the disciples were some of the finest uh, people of humanity at all sure. times. And uh, they were but humans. Even, and, uh, the they, human being, exactly, exactly. They left, they left their beloved alone. They forsook him. And this is sitting like a heavy stone on all of us as humanity. This is a very serious karma on, on the heads of all of us. And uh, at that time, we chose uh, uh, crucifixion, the path of crucifixion as a spiritual uh, work. That's why humanity has been crucified ever since. That's why we are suffering so much. This is due to the way we treated the beloved in uh, Jerusalem at that time. Not the Jews, not the Romans, has nothing to do with this. But we, the spiritual people, represented by his mandali. I'm not blaming them because I don't know how I would be I would behave at that time. I have no idea. I don't know if I was there or not. I don't think I was there. And uh, <clears throat> once I was thinking to myself, if Jesus at that time would have the four mandali who stood next to him in Manonash, you know, all of humanity came so close to Baba, hundreds of thousands of people, and, and to Manonash. First, as a new life, he managed only 36 people were uh, were willing and uh, qualified to share this <coughs> adventure for him. You think is there is op any problem for the avatar to share uh, 10 million people uh, in the new life? This is it's a, it's a non issue for him. We are, we are uh, all of humanity, we are a travel, we are just a. Uh, a little dot next to his uh, toe. All of us, with all our troubles, we are nothing to him. If he wants to turn his key, it's a non we are a non-issue. We are not a big problem. Uh, we, <laughs> we made it a big problem. <laughs> it's up to him. He can make peace on earth in a second, but we refuse to do it. We have to approach him for this. And we are not doing it. Where are the, where are the bubble lovers? Where are the other spiritual movements? We hardly see them and we hardly hear them. I think we are coming now soon to the meeting of Yui. Thank, you, guessing... Thank you for your wonderful open heart. And okay. appreciate your... I'll be glad to... Thank you. Yes, I hope this, uh, yes. what we have been sharing will uh, contribute to the community. We learn to work together with harmony and stop judging the world, ignoring uh, <clears throat> the problems, the political problems. Baba warned us not to get involved with politics, not to backbite, not to gossip, just to be centered on him. 
And uh, I was thinking about this as the past few weeks. We are all enmeshed with some scars, how to get out of it. And so the way to get out of all this binding of some scars, the very effects that I'm alive without doing anything, my mind is working, my heart is beating, some scars are being produced, even I'm not doing anything. So the, the only sanskar we should be get bound is to get ourselves bound to the avatar, to the beloved. We, we, as soon as we bound to him, <coughs> then we are free. <laughs> the, all the sanskars I'm having will become a tool in his service. <clears throat> and he is you, and you will take the command from now on, and will keep on enlightening us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll do that, that amazing magic trick where out of my beard comes a mouse. Oh, but I want to see a real mouse. Uh, it was a real mouse until I did the magic and then it became. Yeah, 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 I can see. Yeah, right. Okay, so you're becoming a host now? Yes. You did? Now the host. More or less. Let's see. Reclaim host. Okay. Baba Ron, J. Baba Ron, Rosa. And, <clears throat> and you have to stop the recording. Oh, good. Good thing. Do press. Because uh, what you're saying. Okay. It's now stopping the recording.